Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from IP.com and this week I'm up uh, visiting Chirpy at Chirpy's Tinkerings and uh, working on a couple projects here to see the Algonquin uh, Steam Festival. I'm excited. Uh, Chirpy's a wonderful guy. I want to take a look around and, and do some projects and hope some catch some video and uh, we'll go from there. So before I come up here, uh, I asked Chirpy if he by chance had any more that uh, pieces of railroad track laying around that I sure would like to have a bench anvil, and he said uh, said he did. So uh, what we got going on here is about a six inch length of a uh, of a uh, track, and he's already drilled mounting holes in the bottom. He's got it mounted to the shaper, and right now he's flattening off the top. And I think uh, I think he's taking fifty thou depths a cup. If I'm right, is that right, Chirp? Yeah, it is hard, and so I can't push it as hard as I used to. Okay, so uh, I don't know how well my mic's picking up, but he says that uh, the track is, is pretty work hard, and so he can't push it as hard as he, uh, as, you know, they normally does stuff. But I tell you what, these chips are uh, coming off hot, and they're uh, they're shooting. And I tell you what, the uh, I don't have a shaper. I wish I did. The uh, it's uh, pretty mesmerizing to watch, and. The way I understand it is that uh, there's some things that a, a, a shaper excel at and cutting a hardened steel is one of them. So I want to get out of Chirpy's way and let him work and uh, maybe come in and, and see something else. Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and I'm in Chirpy's workshop and Chirpy has uh, been taking the time to, treat, uh, to show me how to scrape. And so I'm on the back side of the straight edge and I thought I'd uh, do a little recording so you could see what I'm doing. So you can feel free to laugh at me or cheer me on or whatever you got to do. So let me bring the uh, camera in and, and uh, I'll show you what I got going on. Okay, so I'm on the, uh, what would I guess normally be the flat side or the straight edge side of the straight edge here. Uh, I've already scraped on the bevel side and I'll show that here in a few minutes. Uh, so I've uh, taken the scraper and uh, making a, made a couple passes uh, all along the whole work uh, in two directions like this here. Uh, to and, and stoned it down so it would pick up dye a little easier and so what I discovered was that it was high here on both ends and I've just scraped uh, the, my spots down here on both ends so I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take the flat, uh, straight edge here over to the uh, to the surface plate and we'll rub it and see what we got so on the stone is a, a very thin coat I think it's Prussian blue oil paint and uh, so you know, every few rounds you want to make sure it's rolled out oh here we go I guess is the camera pick that up? I don't know. It's, just, it's hard to see on the. Oh, the let's wider. see here. Okay. Okay. It's probably washed out a little bit, but it's a small tube of uh, Permatex uh, non drying Prussian blue uh, marking compound. So there's uh, a, a, a few drops have been added to the plate and, and it's rolled very thin. I've, I've learned from doing the other side that it's, uh, it's important to kind of roll and refresh this a little bit because the more you rub the more um, the more you uh, I don't know thins out so alright so um, I'm working on the main flat section here and I'm just gonna set it on the surface plate here and rub it and you'll see that it's pivoting down toward that end and it's pivoting at this end so that tells me that um, those ends are uh, are high so it's convex I'm sorry, it's concave surface and, and just touching on the ends. So I'm going to rub it a few times and pick up some blue. And again, we'll see that it's just marked and picked up on the end. So I'm going to get this clamped in and I'll bring you in and we'll, we'll do a little scraping. Okay, so I've got the uh, straight angle, I mean the uh, straight edge clamped down. And I know that the camera won't pick up. I don't think the camera will pick up, but let me use this pencil as a pointer. We'll see here on this corner, it has picked up and uh, right across here and really kind of the same way over here this corner and right across in here so what I want to do is I want to give them a couple good scrapes uh, kind of roughing the material down and uh, hopefully bring these edges down and the next time I rub We'll see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it from both angles. I 
All right, so next I'm gonna dab it with a little bit of uh, mineral spirits here. I, I think it keeps the I think it keeps the stone from clogging up so much. And I'm gonna stone these burrs down. like that. Wipe it off real good. Dry it. I'll make sure it's really dry because I notice that uh, if you uh, have any mineral spirits at all on your workpiece and you set it down it will definitely smear the marking. So let me get another uh, reading off of this and we'll come right back. Okay after uh, rubbing it down we take a look here. I don't again I don't know if the camera pick it up I still have it on the end, but see now I'm starting to see it creep up here in the middle a little bit, a little bit hence here and there. Uh, same way here, I still got some on this corner and it's starting to move down. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll progressively work that and eventually that'll meet in and I'm just rough scraping, scraping to bring the bulk of the material down um, till it's, it's flat and then I'll uh, break up the, the little islands uh, for, for contact points. So I, I started with the beveled edge side. And I don't know if that picks up, but this is uh, it's pretty flat and, and marks real well. I'm going to continue on with this. Um, I don't have much time left uh, for shop time. We got some. We're going to go to the steam festival um, starting tomorrow and uh, Saturday, and then I have to head home Sunday. But uh, I'm going to continue doing a little bit of this. I'm going to do it off camera. But there's some other stuff that I want to show. Chirpy has uh, just been an awesome, awesome host. So let me uh, let me get it set up here, and I'll bring you right back in. So you see this little machinist clamps here. Uh, I, I told Chirpy, I'm like Chirpy, man, those are those are pretty cool. He says, well, they're super easy to make, man. He says, uh, we'll fire up the forge and we'll uh, we'll turn you. I'll give you some instructions, and we'll see, and we'll make you some. So. Um, I'm going to move the camera here just a little bit and sure enough he uh, showed me how to how to make those heat them up and forge them down they need a little machine work but that's going to have to be uh, have to save that uh, for a project when I get back home but you see they're nice and tapered they just need to be drilled and, and uh, you know machine flat and, and screws put in and I said uh, well, I said, I, I bet you can make a chisel that way. He says, well, here, let's make a chisel. So this is a piece of a coil spring, uh, I think half inch diameter. Yeah, or five eighths. And uh, he, told me, he told me what to do as I done it and forged it down and sharpened it up. And I tell you what, that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty nice chisel. I tell you what, I put it up against any of them in my toolbox. Um, now I will admit to this, I, you know, he was explaining to me how to temper it, and I'm like, I, I'm not understanding. So I did, uh, I did have Chirpy actually do all the tempering for me, so I can watch and see. But uh, you know, once I got to see what he was talking about, and made it really, really clear. And then uh, I think Chirpy's going to loan me his uh, straight edge here that we're scraping in. So we forged up a little, uh, and Chirpy done this here, uh, forged up a little eye uh, hook so that the straight edge can be hung up when it's not in use. So that was uh, pretty cool stuff. And I believe I mentioned in a previous video or earlier that uh, when I was talking to Chirpy that, you know, I said, uh, hey, uh, I, I know that you do a lot, of, have a lot of railroad track and stuff like that. I said, do you have a piece up there? I'd like to have a bench anvil. And he said, sure enough. So he uh, stuck this one here on the shaper and flattened it down for me and drilled mounting hose and so now I got a nice uh, bench anvil. The chirpy, uh, man, I just thank you so much for that. Uh, very kind of you and, and this is going to get some use. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. And we got some other things going on and, and uh, Chirpy's got some stuff going on and, and hopefully uh, you know I'll get some more video of it. But look, I'm going to have to be honest guys, I'm enjoying the visit and I'm enjoying the time in the shop and goofing off and I just... I just don't always remember to uh, press the record button, so I'll uh, catch you here in a minute. So you know I've been uh, working off off and on from this little Kenneth Wells uh, stationary engine, and and uh, 
Chirpy happened to ask if, uh, hey, do you have any steam oil? I'm like, no. He says, well, here. So he hit me up with a quart of, uh, this is uh, uh, 600, 600 uh, weight uh, steam oil. So that should probably last me a lifetime, honestly. So Chirpy, thanks a lot, man. I'm gonna put that on my shelf with my oils and, and I'll have it to use and, and uh, go into town. Additionally, uh, Chirpy, uh, it's gonna be three carbide scrapers. There's a nice wide flat one and a medium one, and then one that uh, can be used to get into dovetails. So, if I'm feeling really brave after I scrape up the straight edge, I think uh, I'm gonna take a look at uh, my milling machine, at least at the very least, to make sure that the dovetails are parallel. So, if you guys got uh, some suggestions or some things around that, uh, when I start that, please let me know. And Chirpy, if you're watching this. Um, when you see me start working on that, if you see me goof up or see something I can do better, just let me know. Okay, so Chirpy's uh, he's making a hex block for his R8 collets. And uh, he's uh, sort of getting everything uh, set up and ready to go. He's tramming in his uh, Gingery uh, dividing head, which he uh, made an interesting uh, modification to. The sector arms, I guess, has... Uh, so this might be... Uh, and he might mention this, I don't know. Um, the sector arms, you know, are or friction fit onto the spindle when you first make them but you know as as you use them they wear so what he's done is he's drilled a hole in the spindle and put a little spring in there in the top I think he was just pointing to it and uh, then turned down a little uh, a little um, brass uh, divot that pushes and springs and pushes up against the sector arm to keep them stiff so now they're uh, nice and working again and and uh, He's, I think he's about ready to go. I think he's got. I think he's got the uh, the spindle nose of it uh, trammed into the uh, uh, to the cutter and or to the cutting axis of the of the mill. So uh, won't be long, and, and uh, he'll do that. So when uh, keep an eye out for that video for uh, uh, Chirpy. I'm sure he's already got it out. So if you get a chance, watch it because you know it's you know it's chir you know with Chirpy, it's going to be cool. I also put a spring in that one down there so that. It Okay, Chirp, say that again, Chirp. I put a spring. There's a set screw that's supposed to go in right here that pushes the... Uh, Adjusts the backlash or something on the... Yeah, it pushes the... The worm? worm? Into the worm gear. Okay. It's supposed to, you're supposed to just tighten it up as it wears. I got tired of tearing the thing apart to adjust it, so I ended up just drilling the hole out, putting a larger set screw in there. And putting a spring, a really, really stiff spring in there. Okay. So it, okay, it so it does it. itself in. I got it. Because otherwise, you'd have to pull the arm, the sector arm, the plate off, and everything to get to it to, to adjust it. Mm -hmm. If you just use the set screw. Yeah. Cool beans. I tell you what, it's a great project, and it was a. It's a. If you've not seen Chirpy build his uh, Gingery dividing head, uh, you know, go to a site. I'll put a link uh, to Chirpy's. Uh, YouTube channel here below and, and, and a link here on the screen uh, for this uh, for this Gingery dividing head build. It's a uh, it's it's great video. It's great great watch. I encourage you to see it. All right, so let me get out of his way so he can go to work. Hey, Chirp. Hello. So uh, I'm in Chirpy's uh, shop and I've been here for a few days and I've had a wonderful wonderful visit and and I apologize for not having too much shop video, but. Uh, you know, you get out here and, and you get working and, and, and playing and having a good time and I just forget to hit the record button. So uh I thought maybe I'd get at least uh at least a little recording here of Chirpy and, and Chirpy, I just wanna thank you so much uh for your hospitality and your family's hospitality for having my wife and I here. Uh I just want you to know that we've had a great time. So uh, what do you got to, what do you got going on tonight? Right now I'm just machining up the Hex call it block. I already have the thing turned down. It's all to size. I've got it set up on the mill over there. You, you can show that. Sure. Um, I'm coming around here trying not to make you too dizzy. I've got it set up on the dividing head already. Everything's ready to go. I just got to cut it. I just need a clearance for the everything in place so that I don't run the collet chuck into the dividing head. It is a Gingery dividing head and it's actually a really nice one for 
Awesome. So you uh, you found a pretty good deal on a set of RA collet block or collets, right? Yeah. And uh, I think you had a, a video come out not too long ago where you had uh, created a, a your your lathe has like a, a Morse uh, four taper. So you created the sleeve to hold the uh, R8 collets in your in your uh, headstock. Yeah, it's down here. I keep all the lathe stuff here. The mill stuff's over here. Um, awesome. The shaper stuff is up there, and all the precision stuff for the scraping is down there. But just this. Thin little sleeve is all that. Yeah, I remember. I remember watching that uh, video. That was that was pretty cool. So you're making this uh, call it uh, set uh, more versatile, right? By you've uh, machined down some stock here, and you're going to make a hex uh, block. And and, uh, and I think you told me that you were going to make a square block too. I might make a square block later on. You haven't decided. Haven't really decided yet. No, a lot of it. Oh, I'm planning on just using it to cut hex heads on bolts and stuff like that. Gotcha. For a wrench. Or I'll just use it to hold stuff on the mill for cutting slots in it for screwdriver or screw heads and also just for holding round stock rather than trying to fight with V blocks and stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's a good idea. Well, you know, Chirpy, I won't uh, I won't keep you from work and I just wanted to Tell everybody that uh, I've had a wonderful time here at uh, Chirpy's Tinkerings. Uh, he has a great shop. Uh, he spent a lot of time with me teaching me how to scrape. Um, I didn't spend much time with you. I just push you to work. <laughs> well, that's what it is. And you know, I uh, I learned one thing. I really learned was that uh, I got muscles that get sore. I didn't know that I had muscles there. You know. And uh, anyway, uh, Chirpy was nice enough to. Uh, take me out and uh, to his forging area and and uh, forge up some uh, clamps uh, for some uh, toolmakers clamps and make a uh, made a cold chisel out of a piece of a uh, uh, coil spring, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's pretty. I've had a great time. I just uh, can't say enough nice things about Chirpy and his family. Uh, if you ever up in this uh, area, uh, you need to check out the. Uh, 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 Algonquin. Algonquin. I don't know why I can't Algonquin say it. Algonquin Mill Festival. The Algonquin Mill Festival. Uh, lots of uh, uh, lots of lots of activities to do. There's uh, a couple traction engines there. Some uh, some scale traction engines driving around. Uh, big steam engine driving the mill. Uh, the mill in operation. Just all kinds of great people and things to do and and see and and uh, and buy. <laughs>